parties are winding down here at Bowling Green, but we have got a great Mac East showdown. We're cooking up an excellent game. Buffalo and Bowling Green, the winner will be unbeaten in Mac East play by the end of this game. We welcome you to Joint Perry Stadium. Dan Gatowski along with Brian Kavanaugh and Gerard Sherry. Ryan, let's first get into this Buffalo Bulls offense. We've seen so far, this is a team that can put up big points on just about anybody. And they're doing it through the air. They're fourth in the MAC in passing. A big reason, obviously, is quarterback Cole Snyder. I think he's seeing the field real well, completing over 60% of his passes, and he's spreading the wealth. And I look for Snyder to have a big day against Bowling Green's 11th ranked in the MAC passing defense. Gerard Cherry, you're the defensive expert here in the booth today. What are the Falcons going to do to try to slow this Bulls offense down? Well, Dan, despite getting up a lot of points in yardage, Bowling Green's defense has shown some signs that they are capable of playing defense at a high level. However, in order to win today on the other side of the football, the Falcons' defense has to consistently for four quarters make Bulls quarterback Cole Snyder very uncomfortable and effective in his level of play. Let's look at the coaches, starting with Buffalo, Maurice Linguist, a coach that is a fairly you know, new to this MAC conference, getting his feet wet and trying to rebuild this program. It kind of stepped off the last few years, but he thinks he's got them ramped up in the right direction. On the flip side, Scott Leffler is also got a program on the rise. Been here a little bit longer, but still good things happening for the Falcons. And a very important game, guys, for both of these teams to, you know, kind of continue their the way they're trending. Bowling Green has won the coin toss. They have elected to defer, so it's Buffalo going on offense first. That kind of maybe, I don't know, is that uh, advantageous for Buffalo to get their offense rolling here, Ryan, early? I think so. I, you know, I think they look at Bowling Green as a team that you can score points on, and Buffalo has been doing it, you know, the last couple of weeks. They, they ran the ball real well. Last week, they threw the ball real well. So um, I think they're in a phase of taking whatever the defense gives them. Beautiful afternoon weather-wise here in northern Ohio. Very cool temperature. Kick coming short and mishandled. And well, good hands there. They're just going to cover it and start at the 25-yard line. So a little dramatic, but it's Bulls football. Let's uh, break down what we're going to see offensively with the Cole Snyder at quarterback for Buffalo. Those numbers look good. Ryan, what are his strengths that you've seen so far this year? Well, he's a transfer from Rutgers, and he's becoming more comfortable each game with his wide receivers and the people around him. You know, coming in, transferring, having a new offense, new offensive line, sometimes that can present some challenges. What I think we're going to see is a Cole Snyder that improves each and every week throughout the season. First down, and the first go for Buffalo. They go on the ground. That's Juan Cook. Not a big game. Let's take a look at our impact players. Gerard, who do we like defensively for Buffalo that we, or for BG that will stand out today? Well, certainly Carl Brooks. He's the guy that makes it happen on the defensive front. And Anders, he's a tackling machine. When he's around the football, look for balls to be stripped and for him to go sideline to sideline. So a short gain on first down. Second down and seven. They go back on the ground to Cook. This time, he gets out in front and is beyond the first down marker. So a good second down run for the Bulls, and they move the chains. You see big number 62, Jack Hans, the center. When he's getting to the second level, you got linemen blocking. They'll watch the center and look at him creeping up. When you got your linemen getting five, six, seven yards upfield blocking, that's when a seven yard gain becomes a 40 yard touchdown. Right, as a defensive back, you do not want to see the big uglies in your face. You want to get those guys off. So the Bulls making some noise on their first drive there at the 35. And now here comes Snyder in the air and oh, bobbled and caught. Man, Quan Williams. Brought it down. That was not easy. 29 yards. Keon with great focus and the catch for the first down. Drought, it almost looked like he tipped the ball to himself. It wasn't quite a back shoulder fade, but it was up the sidelines. Oh, no, he just double caught it. Yes, he played the tip drill with himself. He does a great job of concentrating and making the play, though, and we were not surprised by the fact that they're going with the vertical passing attack for the Bulls. And, and why do it easy when you can get style points, right? <laughs> First down after the big pickup, and they are deep 
into Bowling Green territory, now inside the 30. It's always nice, Ryan, to have a kind of a big play like that on your first drive. Just kind of opens things up, gets everyone settled down, doesn't it? It does offensively. Not only does it build confidence, but now the defense, they can't be creeping up against Ron Cook in this run game because they know we're going to stretch you and challenge you deep and to the outside as well. So another three-yard gain on first down, but Cook has been the only guy running the football so far from Buffalo. Now they switch it up and get a good run here. Mike Washington on the carry. So again, mixing it up in the running game, that's been a, a new look here for Buffalo. Certainly, and the little thing that you appreciate about Washington being an underclassman out there showing that, hey, I belong in these big moments of the football game. But right there, basic run. I would like for him guys to stick more in the middle because he had more pay dirt game if he just stayed straight ahead with the run. Buffalo looks very comfortable right now, and that is not how Bowling Green wanted to start this game. And they go back to Cook. Now they put the hammer down, but that's probably going to be another Bulls first down. Well, Gerard, this has been a pretty impressive drive so far for Buffalo. Uh, what's your assessment of what we've seen from BG defensively? Well, right now they're having a hard time dealing with the fact, is it a run? Is it a pass? They're off balance, and this is what happens when you face a balanced attack from the offense. The one big passing play really opened it up for Buffalo, and now Snyder has them at the 20. Now he keeps it wide open, near side, turns it, and he falls in. No, stopping at the two-yard line. Boy, I tell you what, that is a gutty play by the quarterback who was willing to put himself in harm's way to get the score. And listen, it, it, yes, but I don't know if Mo Linguist likes this from his quarterback. <laughs> you know, sometimes just dip out of bounds and don't try to be the hammer to get into the end zone. But, you know, the, the, his team probably loves that. Now they go on second, that first and goal, and they get the touchdown. Nothing flashy. Ron Cook bouncing off and scoring. And Buff Bowling Green wins the coin toss, but boy, this drive certainly went the other way for them. They have watched Buffalo charge in with a four-yard touchdown run. And this is exactly what you want from your offensive line, pushing, not allowing the defensive line to get penetration. Then Cook does a nice job of lowering his shoulder pads and getting into the end zone. And I'll go back to that quarterback run. Yes, his teammates are fired up about a play like from a play like that from their quarterback showing toughness. Alex McNulty with the point after, and it's good. And it is mission accomplished for Buffalo as they go eight plays in 75 yards for a 7-0 lead here. So any of the emotional uh, excitement for Bowling Green if you're playing at home, it's not a good tone setter for this game by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and you have to consider on that drive, there were no negative plays. No. You know, there's no penalties. There's no negative plays. That was a machine workman-like drive by Buffalo. And if you're BG, you, you got to get over, Gerard, on those those benches, and your defense coordinator's got to bring you together and be like, come on, we have to do better. Exactly, because there was no pressure applied, so obviously they're going to have to start employing some form of blitz to get to the quarterback to make Cole uncomfortable, because if you let him do what he wants to do and be comfortable back there, he's going to pick you apart via running or passing the football. Yeah, big energy right now on the Buffalo sideline. Well, that was not very long ago, <laughs> like in the open, when we said Buffalo's going to score points. They'll figure out a way, and the onus now becomes a little more important for the Falcons to figure out, hey, this is a legit team offensively that we are up against today. I believe they only completed one pass on that drive also, which is the big hitter of the Keon Williams up the sidelines. So a cleaner kick and no return, so it'll set up Bowling Green's offense, and Matt McDonald will bring the Falcons on the field. So the uh, senior from Newport Beach, California, Bowling Green with just three points on opening half drives this year out of ten drives. So they, not, they don't necessarily start fast. Got to love that 13-1 and one touchdown interception ratio. It takes care of the football. Coaches love that number. There's a little toss on the run, and 
dropped. Can't keep. Kevon Kroom is the one who mishandled it there. Impact players, Gerard, for defensively for Buffalo. Tell me about Patterson and Dolak. Well, both these guys are premier tacklers in the MAC. They are always around the football. When you look at on the offensive side for Bowling Green, you have two playmakers in the running back position that can certainly go the distance as well. Second down after the incompletion. Now they go on the ground. Buffalo getting contact in the backfield. Jamal Johnson on the carry, but so far Buffalo's defense looking pretty legit after a couple of plays here. Yeah, very impressive. And what you notice is the penetration on the part of the defense. And when you get penetration like that, it makes it very easy for linebackers like Caleb Offer, who's a cornerback actually, to make a play at the line of scrimmage. Third down and nine. Buffalo, but BG looking to make a splash here on their first offensive series, but see what they do here. A lot of time to throw and caught in open space in the middle. Falcons get the first down with Tyrone Broden on the catch for a gain of 23. That's a big play early. You want to get your offense revved up. Well, the pass protection holds up, and you look at McDonald, his eyes are left, but he knows he's got that dig coming from the outside on the right to Broden. Broden finds the soft spot, and McDonald delivers a strike. So a big plus for BG. They keep the football. Now we'll have our first penalty. Buff Buffalo looks like they are maybe going to get a good call their way here. Full start on the offense, 77. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. That's our referee, Billy Williams. His first call of the afternoon. Falcons get backed up to their own 44. Trying to answer after Buffalo went right down for an opening series score. The rollout by McDonald. Little uh, safety pass. Another bobble catch. They are not. Oh, dropped it. Okay, well, could have almost had it. Yeah, these bobble uh, catches are seeming to be the theme of the day in the passing game so far, but that one goes incomplete. Yeah, it's probably cold weather because we've had a stretch in North well, in Ohio where now it's in the 40s, 50s, and guys have to acclimate to that. And it seems to me that the Bulls have done a better job so far of catching the football as opposed to the Falcons. Levi Gazarek, the tight end, was the drop there, so it brings up second down and now 15. Here comes McDonald, wide up, deflected at the line. Wow. Jalen Bass, I'll tell you what, got to like what Buffalo is doing some good things early defensively, Gerard. Certainly, and when you have a stalemate at the line of scrimmage as a defensive lineman, you are taught, elevate. If it's a pass, knock it down. Just because you can't get to the quarterback, there are other effective ways to have an impact on the play, and Bass showed you right there how it's done. And it helps to be six foot three. Well, certainly. <laughs> you know, 295. Play some volleyball. There you go. Big fella. So another third down opportunity for the Falcons. They delivered earlier, but this is longer. Throw in the middle. Easily picked off. And now Buffalo with Marcus Fuqua is going to get great field positions. A big mistake by McDonald. And the Bulls continue to build on their momentum. Coming into last week's game against Akron, McDonald had gone 241 consecutive passes without an INT, threw one last week, and here he is again. And Gerard, it looks like he never saw Fu Fuqua. Yeah, a classic example of not being on the same page with your receiver. Your receiver's outside and you're throwing the ball inside as well, but great job by Fuqua of making a play on the ball. Take advantage of the mistakes that a football team is going to make, and right there, Fuqua made the Bowling Green Falcons pay. Fuqua Jr. from Southfield, Michigan. Now the question is, guys, offensive coordinators on sudden change of possession around the 35 to the 45, they love going up top. Take a Let's shot. see if, if Cole Snyder takes a shot here. Buffalo has been very confident since the opening drive. Now they've got great field position starting in BG territory at the 45. Quarterback keep, he's wide open. Tries to spin away. Good ankle tackle. You've seen Snyder use his feet effectively now on consecutive drives. Chris Bacon on the tackle, but... Yeah, Cole Snyder is not sliding into anything. He's like, I will initiate, <laughs> and I will take on the contact. You don't see me wearing a red jersey out here, so... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as well play football. 
BG trying to maybe contain a little better. Here's second and five. Now they all make, make, make a good tackle there. That's Mike Washington again. These plays are unfolding pretty similar, Gerard. It looks like Buffalo running in the middle and figuring out a way to bounce outside. How can BG contain that better? Really? Well, in my opinion, Dan, they're doing a good job of keeping them inside and not letting them bounce to the outside where they can pick up more yardage. So what you appreciate about that effort is, is that these one-on-one -on -one tackles, they are winning the battle, as you see right there. Great job of getting a shifty runner down to the ground. But more importantly, I'm looking at Buffalo and wonder why they're being so conservative on the offensive end. Yeah, let's credit Chris Bacon with that tackle. Falcons trying to negate the turnover on third and four. And there's a run and a breakout for Washington. He stays up far side inside the 15. 21 yards on that carry. And the Bulls are bringing the hammer down early on BG. And what you like is the fact that the Bulls are being very physical. And when you have a hole like this and you can run through tackles, Washington is able to show you that, hey, not only can I run through tackles, but I have the speed to get to the second and third level as well. Nice run on the part of Washington, the underclassman for the Bulls. Ryan Washington is 6'2", 215, but he's playing a little bigger than that right now. Certainly. On the carry in the middle. Boy, I tell you what, good contact initially. The fall ahead for a few yards, but again, Washington... Ryan, he is getting all, a lot of touches for them. I'll tell you what, I don't know where they schemed for him for Bowling Green, but they're going to have to start giving him extra attention the way he's going. Well, I don't know if it's a... I'm sure it's a combination of how hard Washington's running and Bowling Green just not doing a very good job of tackling because they're getting bodies on Washington. Quarterback keep for Snyder. They string it out and force him out at about the five-yard line. And Ryan, that's a really good point, because at some point you have to make these one-on-one -on -one tackles. And when you are isolated as a defender, it's your job to bring that guy down. Now, you want a gang tackle, and that's how you're taught to play as a defense. But when you have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, you must make the play. Oh, great ankle tackle to stop Snyder from getting out into open space. Jordan Anderson is there. I tell you what, you do... It's kind of a, a, a catch-22. These tackles look great, but when you got one guy making a tackle in space, if he doesn't make that tackle, you got a huge problem, right? Exactly, and that's what the Bulls are doing on offense. They are isolating the defense to create one-on-one -on -one situations in which they love the matchup of their running backs versus whoever the defender is for the Bowling Green Falcons. So here's McNulty with a pretty short field goal opportunity. Trying to convert that interception into points for Buffalo. And they have now moved out to a 10-0 lead. Field goal is good. Bowling Green trying to settle down. They're trailing at home to the Bulls of Buffalo.
Let's jump back to last year's game between BG and Buffalo Falcons. Get out to a 14-0 first quarter lead. And then here's the uh, Kyle Van Treese injured late in the first half for Buffalo. But they hung in there. Scott Matt Myers came in. It was 28-10 at the half. Buffalo gets 13 unanswered points in the third. Things went back and forth all the way. Matt McDonald, five total touchdowns. There's the finish, and BG, a 56-44 win, but wasn't quite, that's a, seems like a distant memory now as uh, Falcons have to try to settle in, settle down, and Scott Leffler is going to have to have some positive things offensively on this drive. His team in a 10-0 hole. Ball caught at the five. See if the Falcons can spring a little bit of a return here. Not really. So ball will set up just outside the 20. And Ryan, again, only a couple, only a, a little bit of a sample of what BG is trying to do offensively. Where do you see them trying to maybe shake things up a little bit here? Well, the running game isn't working very well because bl Buffalo's blitzing the run. They need to do something, like similarly when Buffalo hit the, the pass to Williams up the sideline, they need to do something to loosen up the defense of Buffalo. They got to earn respect. Certainly. And be on the same page when you're making a pass play with the wide receiver and the quarterback. On the ground, Falcons get going on first down, but Jamal Johnson has nowhere to go. And we've already got a couple of the bigs pushing and shoving on each other. Officials step in. See Sean Dolak run into the football. I think you said it earlier, Gerardi, sideline to sideline, but that was a tremendous play. And a very physical tackle, and that type of tackle sends a message to the Bowling Green Falcons that on the defensive side of the ball, the Bulls are not playing. That's a no-gainer on first down for BG. Play fake, pressure's coming, man. Gray jerseys everywhere. Two blue guys taken down. Matt McDonald. That was a something of a phenomenon where you have a screen situation where the defensive line is completely obviously unblocked and they find a way to surround McDonald to make the tackle. Wow, that was impressive on the defensive side for the Bulls. You see Folsom right there ended up getting the sack, but how McDonald avoided those two flying Bulls. <laughs> Ducked under him and then waiting for him was the 285 pounder Deshaun Folsom. No, no thanks. Four yard loss, third and 14, and a bad throw underneath, but that whole play had bust written all over it. CJ Lewis was the intended receiver, but now BG punting again. You don't want Buffalo's offense on the field, and a lot of first quarter time for Buffalo to just keep swinging the hammer. Right, and right now, the Falcons have no answer for the stunts and the loops and all the blitzes and different exotic looks that the Bulls are bringing from the defensive front to put pressure on McDonald. And the Bulls are, again, probably going to come up with good field position. Keon Williams is standing at his own 40-yard line. And not a good punt. Let's see if he can catch it on the bounce. He does. And he stays in bounds, just getting inside to BG territory. Well, the first quarter so far, it's all Buffalo here at BG. Defense, offense, they are strong here against the Falcons.
The Bulls of Buffalo making a big statement early here as they feel that the, the MAC East title is something that is potentially within their grasp, and they have delivered on all counts early here against Bowling Green. And they got a chance to put more points on the board with a drive starting in Falcons territory. Everything Buffalo has done offensively so far, Ryan has been great. Bowling Green not so much. Falcons are just not able to stop Buffalo right now. I, th I think Buffalo's gonna, nice job. Wow. And a spin out of that catch, and he's gonna stay up, and he might get all of it. Pushed out at the one. Incredible, Jamari Gassett. Man, I'll tell you what, 47 yards. One Falcon had a shot to take him down. He kept his feet, and off he goes. Gassett came into today's game with one catch for two yards on the season. He almost houses that one. And again, two missed tackles on that play. Exactly. You have to tackle, especially in the secondary, if you don't want to prevent big plays. Run up the middle, untouched for Ron Cook. Touchdown, Buffalo. Two plays and a score. You have to put up a much better effort than that for the Bowling Green Falcons. You are at home. You're going to have to play with much more pride than what they're playing right now on the defensive effort because the Bulls are fired up and they are having their way on both sides of the ball against this Bowling Green Falcons football team. And more concerning too, Gerard, if you're Bowling Green, this is not like Buffalo's in up-tempo, hurry up, no. get them off balance. Very methodical in their approach of how they're going about their offensive play calling. One would say, I would say actually, that they're being conservative. McNulty's PAT is Well, good. we've got a high scoring game. The problem is it's all lopsided. The visitors from Buffalo have putting their hands around this game and taking control. Here's the big pass that sets up the touchdown. And Jamari Gassett on his way. And then the finish, the touchdown with Ron Cook. More from PG when we come back.
handle it, right? And just play your man call the big every time when it's come. Okay? So the Falcons. I'm not sure if it's time to hit the panic button, but it's getting closer and closer. You give up 17 in the first quarter and don't answer, that's trouble. I don't care what level of football you're playing. As impressive as Buffalo has looked, it's been an uphill challenge for Bowling Green. So two very different stories as the kickoff returned by Teron Keith. And he gets a little space. Flags fly, two of them. Gets almost to the 30-yard line. As the refs deliberate, that normally is a holding call being called against the kickoff return team. Be interesting to see what these officials have to say about the situation. How many flags thrown so far? So we'll assess the flag and tell you what though, Ryan, if you're Scott. During the return, holding, 13 return team, 10 yard penalty for the spittle foul. First down. You know, one of the reasons Buffalo is having success offensively is the play of Cole Snyder. This is a classic RPO where you're going to see Jordan Anderson, number zero, come in from the left. And you see Snyder's reading him, and that means hit it to the replacement receiver who runs right behind him, and that's Jamari Gassett. So while Buffalo's got done a lot of their uh, work on the ground, it's been the big play through the air that's set up their scores. Deep throw by McDonald on that sideline, and good coverage in the secondary, incomplete. He was looking at Tyrone Broden, but, man, I'll tell you what. Ryan, let's bring you back in here. Bowling Green, we have to kind of capsulize what they're not doing well offensively. Where does it start for them, do you think? For me, it's Jakari Robinson, the center. He's the he's the 30-year-old center. He's the unquestioned leader in the offensive line room. They need to do a better job up front. And that was a nice play right there. Good blocking. Better tackling, though. Bowling Green, again, this is the difference between the two defenses. Buffalo is not missing tackles, and Bowling Green is. Right. Initial contact with, with the Bulls, you'll see it right here. We make contact, you go down. Some tackles being made right there, not getting extra yards after the initial contact. Jason Patterson on that carry. Falcons desperate to extend this possession. Give their defense a rest. Buffalo, they're first. It'll be 30 seconds in length. So the Bulls take a timeout. Maybe giving uh, Bowling Green an advantage there to kind of set things up. And another thing that's taking place with Bowling Green on offensive end, guys, is that they're not having any success on first down. If you're going to get ahead of the sticks, you have to make sure that, that first play is a positive one. And as I've been looking at the game unfold, I'm noticing that the first play has not been a successful one for the Bowling Green Falcons. And I, Gerard, that's a great point because the problem is when you're ahead of the chain, when you're, you, it's not a problem, but when you get ahead of the chains, the playbook's wide open. In fact, you're adding pages because you can take some chances. When it's second and 10 or second and more than 10, your playbook shrinks because your game plan has to shrink. So third down and five. Feels like every play is so important for Bowling Green as they just keep slipping a little bit further and further behind to a very demonstrative Buffalo offense. The throw and tipped away. Good coverage there. Let's give credit where credit is due to Caleb Alford in the secondary. Deflecting it, shutting down the drive, and now the Falcons have to punt. That's right. Caleb Alford has been very busy in this first quarter. Made a nice tackle early in the quarter, and then right there does an excellent job of playing the ball and not climbing too soon on the back of the would-be receiver to make a PBU, which means pass breakup for those who are winning. Stop me if you've heard this before. BG punting, Buffalo about to get good field position. Stop. <laughs> Very good. I want to make sure you're listening. Yes, yeah, no, I'm here. Still here. <laughs> Deion Williams standing at about his 42-yard line and another underwhelming punt that uh, doesn't even get midfield. So BG's punting game is 
been off today as well. And the thought of pressure right there is having an impact on the punter for the pulls in that he's making the assumption it's going to get blocked. You have to go through your rotation, and you cannot afford to give up field position. You're at a place right now where it's key that you put them and pin them back if you're the punter for the Falcons. You know, Gerard, uh, as a, I'm, and I'm talking to you now, not me, of course, but as a player who had three Super Bowls and played at the high, three Super Bowl rings, played at the highest level, at what point does the old high school approach of the coach yelling at him, like, hey, you guys got to wake up, How, you know, for, for guys at this level, does that resonate with them? Yeah, it starts now because the energy level is too low for a whole team in which to away the win. Now, that's a much better effort right there on the part of the Falcons. It's going to take that type of effort, Dan, in order to get the job done. Like Washington on the run, but the Falcons, boy, if they need big plays, quick. And that's Carl Brooks. And like I said, Jakari Robinson on the offense, Carl Brooks has got to get going. He needs to, to make some plays because the defense will look to him as, frankly, right. one of the best defensive players in the entire MAC, and he's got to start playing with effort, making some negative plays like that. Right, make his presence felt. Falcons hoping for a three and out. There has been no spark in this game for Bowling Green. Low snap. Throw is, oh, there it was. Good deflection there by Jordan Anderson. Maybe if he had read that a little better, that could have been a pick, but at least two positive plays defensively, Gerard, for Bowling Green to feel good about. Well, Dan, you're just being kind. He's a <laughs> DB. He plays DB for a reason, and that's the reason why. And I'm not insulting him. If he could catch, he'd be a wide receiver. You know, you can only get away with that as a DB yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got, you're allowed to say that. So here it is, third and 12. And Buffalo sets up the screen in the middle, but they tackle it right away. Ball is loose on the turf. But BG picks it up. And we're going to see if this is, in fact, a turnover. Falcons, we said they had nothing to celebrate now. The ruling on the field is a catch and fumble recovered by the defense. All right. Well. And that's the type of energy, that's the type of effort that Bowling Green needs to have in order to get back in this football game. The defense did their part. Now it's up to the offense, Ryan, to come in and do the same thing with the energy being at a high level. Gerard, it starts with Carl Brooks off the edge. Look at the right. He pressures him, and then they read and play the screen well. Ball loose, and it's picked up by Jordan Oladokun who wants to take it the distance, but they flip the field. This is the first time the offense has taken over at the 31, and they're not only taking over with good field position, but they've got some momentum for the first time in this football game. All right, and that's the key part, momentum, because prior to that, that sideline for the Bowling Green Falcons was dead. Sideline interference, Bowling Green. A 15-yard penalty to be assessed at the end of the return by the defense. First down. Bowling Green. And that is the type of stuff that you have to eliminate. And that's on the coaches more so than the players. You have a guy whose job it is to do what? Keep everyone back. You have to do a much better job of doing that because that hurt the momentum right there for the Falcons. So the Falcons take a deep breath. The first significant turnover. There was an interception earlier, but this is a great setup for BG. Now they run and get good yardage from Jamal Johnson on first down. Ryan, what is Matt McDonald going to have to do to settle down and just kind of stay the course going forward? What I'd like Coach Leffler to do is call some shorter plays, maybe a screen, a quick, the quick game action. Let's get some completions. It's like a basketball player seeing the shots go in. Let's get McDonald some completions and that'll give him some more confidence. They get five yards on first down. There is life on the Falcons sideline. Here's McDonald, a lot of time, throwing into open space. Great hook up there, and now it's inside the five-yard line. Man, I'll tell you what, Christian Sims, all of a sudden, the script flips completely in favor of Bowling Green. Christian Sims does an excellent job, Ryan, of getting beyond the second level into the third level to pick up positive yards on that play. You know what I like is they brought that jet motion, play action this way, and the play side tight end going opposite because now you're getting the flow of the defense going one way and you're going against the grain, and McDonald delivered a strike. Sims very athletic. That's 34 yards. First time the Falcons are in the red zone and a good tackle almost in the backfield. 
on Jamal Johnson. Yeah, on that Novak on the stop. Yeah, on that particular play call, I would rather have you go north and south versus Bulls defense because Dolak is one of the best in the MAC at going sideline to sideline to make that tackle. I'll tell you what, if I'm Bowling Green at the end of this quarter, I'm saying, hey, there's a guy on that other sideline. He wears jersey number 52, and we got to block him on every play because Dolak is creating havoc. Second and goal from the seven. And McDonald's going to try to create with his feet. And little lob pass in the back. No. Little too much on that one. Good idea. Tyrone Broden was the target. A little too much on that one, and it's incomplete. Listen, it's no easy task to overthrow Tyrone uh, Broden. He's six foot seven. And uh, McDonald, you know, look, his whole body's going left. He just doesn't get that shoulder down, release point down in the six seven wide out with the leap, unable to get to that football. Yeah, and that's just a situation where McDonald settled down. Granted, you have a, the rest of people pass rushing you, but you have to calm down and take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, he did a nice job of, of buying time and creating space. Bowling Green, they're first. Just a little That'd be 30 seconds away. Tight. So Scott Leffler hoping his team can rise off the mat after taking some serious body blows from Buffalo as the Bulls explode to a 17-0 lead. And what do we think Maurice Linguist is talking about with the officials there? Probably asking from a field position standpoint, timing standpoint, what's going on and why the ball placement, was he over the line of scrimmage? Probably making that argument, but it looked like it was fine to me. But one thing for the Falcons, you do not, you will take any points that you can get but it will be disheartening if they have a field goal in this situation as opposed to scoring a touchdown. Absolutely. The comeback trail is long, but you're going to have to squeeze hard, Ryan, for every point you can get going forward. If they if they score here and they go into the quarter 17-7, to 7, to me, that feels like a moral victory. That they're, you know, th th This is about as bad as they could have played in, in the first quarter. Defensively. McDonald. Now he'll roll it out. On the run, and oh, dropped. I told you they play DB for a reason. <laughs> but again, McDonald has to do a better job, guys, of not forcing balls into coverage. That is a flashback to the first interception that he threw. And it's Fuqua again, number 10, and he gets his hand on it. You have, you know, ball security has to be a primary right now, especially in the red zone, and playing a little fast and loose with the football. So not great passing so far for Bowling Green. And the drive stalls, but they get a short field goal. Oh, they're going to fake it, and it's going to be a bust. And the ball is going to be picked up off the turf. Incredible. Buffalo is going to take advantage of the mistake on the missed field goal. And it is a touchdown for the Bulls. Outrageous. But the question is, oh, there's a flag back at the 30-yard line. Now, the question is going to be, is that ball returnable or not? I mean, you, you can't. It's, it's fourth down. It's a backwards, right. oh, it's well, backwards it was the, it was pass. Right. It's a backwards pass. So right. That, it was, that counts as a lateral. So it yeah. becomes a pass. It's, it's not a, like a block kick. It's right. a fumble. Oh. It's a fumble. Now, the question becomes, was it even? If he was even or in front, then it's an incomplete pass. But it looked like to me it was behind him. During the return, illegal blindside block, number two of the return team. 15-yard bullet from the spot of the foul. First down, Buffalo. Well, I don't know if that takes any sting out of it, but... It, it does to the because it's not a touchdown, but at the same time, as you see right here, watch the ball. It's behind. So right there, that is officially a fumble. <laughs> Actually, what I, what I thought you were going to say earlier, Dan, is the holder had his knee down and threw it backwards. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, should be down as well. Right. I mean, that's what I thought. And the if call you're Leffler, you might want to challenge that and say, hey, yeah. it was down. But regardless. Well, a lot of moving parts in right. that play. Right. Insult to injury right there. And I, I didn't see where the illegal block was, but I can guarantee you it was behind the football. Because there was nobody between Keyshawn Cobb and the end zone wearing a brown jersey, and that's the Bowling Green Falcons. All right, that was one that is disheartening for the Falcons. And that, you know, they're running guys on late. 
So the roller coaster ride continues for BG. They're back down to the bottom. Now a huge run in the middle. Boy, he runs right into the secondary, and the, bu the Bulls just keep pounding it down their throats. Ron Cook stopped by Chris Bacon finally after a gain of 15 yards, and boy, that took all the momentum away from Bowling Green. Certainly, and a basic run play, nothing special about it, just a straight-up dive, and you get 10 to 15 yards on that. Tells me right now the defense is still thinking about the previous play in which they had the special teams blunder. They throw it back near side. That's complete to Cole Harity. Harity generating positive yards. And it feels like a big, fat reset for Buffalo, where their offense was such a well-oiled machine for most of this first quarter as we start to put a wrap on it. And to say it's been all Buffalo is pretty much an understatement. Bowling Green had a chance to get a first late first quarter score, and they blow the fake field goal. 17-0, Buffalo leads. We're back with second quarter football in a moment. The student section a lot thinner today here at Doit Perry Stadium. I guess the students are on a mid-semester break, so kind of a patchwork section there. But uh, the problems are primarily on the football field for Bowling Green trying to rally after a subpar first quarter. Bulls football at the 35 on the ground. Cook stays up. The pile 
gets, he drags the pile a little bit out to the 45. That's a first down get for Buffalo. And maybe it's the 12 o'clock start, and sometimes guys have a hard time adjusting to the earlier starts of the football game. But at some point, this Bowling Green defense and offensive units are going to have to wake up as well as special teams and play a better brand of football, guys. And when we talk about, Gerard, who's making the tackles for Bowling Green, we're calling out the wrong numbers. Those are guys that are deep in the secondary, not guys up front. Right. You want your front seven making plays just like that. And if they can continue to make plays like that, they'll have a chance of getting back in this football game, Ryan. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Well, Buffalo looking for, or BG looking for anything that they can possibly build on, a fumble that they did not recover. Yeah, and, you know, look, that's a stop, but it was Buffalo and it was self-inflicted. And they effectively push the ball outside. And again, that's Rod Cook, who's been the workhorse out of the backfield for Buffalo. And never a good sign when you see a running back getting six, seven, eight yards per carry. That shows me that the defense is not fired up and they're losing at the point of attack. No, I agree with you. And, and you know, look, something should change. So start bringing up, putting some pressure, bringing your linebackers. You know, you have to try something else because right now you, you can't let them get six, seven yards on, on running plays like that. Bulls are two of four on third down. They got the ball right at midfield on a third down and three. Low snap. Little toss in the middle, incomplete. Contact after the Snyder throw, but no flag. And Buffalo will probably punt here. And one of the few times that hey guys, we could question the decision making of Cole Snyder, who's been excellent from the quarterback position for the Bulls. Had another opportunity with a crossing route on the other side of the football field, but elected to go that way and threw an incomplete pass. Jalen Embry standing at his own 10 yard line. This is the first Buffalo punt of the afternoon. They fake it. And they plow ahead for a first down. Wow, a sneaky move by Buffalo. And that's what you call no respect for what's taking place on the Bowling Green in regards to how Buffalo Bulls feel about them right now. Because right there, they shifted and gave an alert that it was going to be a trick play. And watch right. Well, you don't see it right here. But prior to the snap, the, the upright man moved in position to show that, hey, he was going to do something different. And, and Gerard, this wasn't two yards up the middle. Look, look at the... Gray jerseys moving the defense Surging. back. I mean, that is not a short yard to gain on a fake punt where you're just going to go right over center. It's Robbie Mangus who picks up the first down. Now here's Cook brought down by a couple of brown jerseys. And a much better job on the part of the Bowling Green defense of being energetic and playing with some conviction as opposed to just letting the Bulls push them around. Buffalo now has nine first downs to BG's two. So Maurice Linguist goes into this trick bag and pulls out the fake punt that keeps Buffalo's drive going. Early second quarter. And now they're going to even throw a different one. There's a wide open ball caught. Cole Snyder catches it. Man, that ball hung in the air for an hour. 17 yards, a mistimed jump in the secondary, and BG just can't make a big play, Gerard. Well, it seems to me that Buffalo was insulted by the previous trick play that the special teams unit for Bowling Green tried to play, because what have we seen since then? Two trick plays, and as you see right here, pitch to your Williams, who then comes back and leaves his quarterback out to drive. Play. A great job on the part of Snyder review. catching the football. But he took a big shot from Chris Bacon at the end there. Did Cole Snyder, and he took a minute to get up. And yeah. But, you know, even, like, that was a 50-50 ball between a defensive back and a quarterback, and the quarterback and won. won. You know, it's it really, at some point, it's just about who's going to make a play. And these guys right here, well, not these guys, but Buffalo is the one who's making these plays. You know, one thing that always happens for a, a coaching staff when they get caught in the crosshairs of a game like this, like Scott Leffler, at what point when a coach loses faith in his game plan and then has to kind of make a redirect and rally the troops off the mat, Cole Gerard Snyder catches it. What's the, what's the decision process there right now for Bowling Green? Cole uh, Snyder catches it. Because what you're seeing out there, 
in my opinion, Dan, is the one in which it's more about the attitude of Bowling Green as opposed to the play calling. You have opportunities. Play with conviction. Play with heart. You are at home right now facing an opponent that drove from Buffalo five hours, and they have much more energy than you have. Now, Grant, they're leading, so that's the reason why they have this excitement. But ultimately, I think this is going to come down to your attitude. You're saying my will will not be denied. And because of the fact that they have a off campus and that guys are out of school, don't let that factor into the football and how you play because it seems like they're feeling like, hey, we should have an off day as well, but you can't because you have a football game today. And I think that the officials here are looking at a targeting, Gerard, mm -hmm. with Chris ah, Bacon. That was. And Chris Bacon, by the way, he's the, he's the potential offender. After review, it was determined there was no targeting huh? on the play. The result is a first out. You know, they changed the targeting rule to make it a, a, a six-inch radius on the crown of the helmet. And if the eyes are down at the turf, that's where that's an indicator that there's a targeting. And there, I just think there was incidental helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. But Chris Bacon's eyes were up, and that was one of the first positive things that has happened for Bowling Green is that Bacon is not going to be removed from this football game. He's been a tackling machine for the Falcons. Yeah, right, they need up. to be at full strength for right. sure. So from the 28-yard line, Buffalo still moving it. And there's Cook in the middle. And a much better job of what has previously been a 6-7 yard gain, only being a 1 yard gain on the part of Bowling Green Falcons defense. What they need, they, they, but they need more of that. Exactly. You, know, you have Consistent. to build on that. Because last time, you know, there's an incompletion on first down, and then you gave up six or seven yards on second. So only a gain of one, second down and nine. And Buffalo can kind of work methodically now with a 17-0 lead. All those points came in the first quarter. Throwing on the run, and they don't tackle. It's Justin Marshall who stays up after the catch. And Those Ryan are the mistakes, called. Gerard, that BG's defense just can't make. Right, and Ryan just spoke on this idea that, hey, you have a positive play, and you come back with a negative play, and that negative play puts you down a position in the red zone to where you're close to scoring. It has to be consistency. That's one of the major issues that the Falcons are missing. You have to make these tackles, as you see right here. Nice ball on the part of Snyder throwing to his receiver. Marshall, Marshall does a great job of doing what? Staying in bounds and picking up positive yards. It's a 20-yard game. Buffalo's fourth trip into the red zone. Now it's Cook on the ground, bouncing around, staying up and pushing the pile. Looks like they stop him maybe at the two, but another thing, Ryan, it really seems like Buffalo's able to get yards after that initial contact with uh, you know the running back and whatnot. There's missed tackles on almost every play, frankly. Right here, the first man fills the hole, and running back bounces off him. From the one. And they try to launch in. Cook tries to fly over the pile, but when you're 5'9", 190, you got to have some serious springs, and he didn't have them on that play. No, he did not, but you appreciate the effort on the part of the Bowling Green Falcons defense of being stout at the point of attack. And in the goal line situations, typically the low man wins. And right there, the Falcons were the low men and that they got enough penetration to stop Cook from scoring. Carl Brooks is the injured Bowling Green player. Will break with Buffalo leading.
And the Falcons guys are known for what? On the defensive side of the ball. Putting pressure on the quarterback. That has not been the issue today as you see the, the numbers. Great job against a very talented quarterback at UCLA. And then at Eastern Kentucky, they did an excellent job. And then last week against Akron, six sacks. But today it has been a lack of presence and the ability to get in the backfield and put the pressure on Cole, the quarterback for the Bulls. If they're going to have some success and turn this thing around, they're going to have to increase the amount of pressure they're applying. And losing Carl Brooks, the senior from Lansing Sexton, is certainly not going to help. Here's the Bulls. And a little misdirect, and boy, that play was a bust. One of the rare mistakes by Buffalo in terms of their execution, Ryan. Well, there was miscommunication in the backfield. You saw Snyder trying to ball fake. The running back wasn't in shape, and, and that was frankly just a throwaway. And Ryan, why do teams run plays like that into the boundary? I'm always wondering why not work towards the field. You have to have more field to work with. I agree with you. And look at this. They're staying on the field for fourth down. Snyder hands off, and they get the power back, and I don't know if he got it. They had Mike Washington, who's been so solid and good, and they finally got him down. And that's the type of effort, that's the type of attitude that you want to display, especially when you're playing at home, heck, when you're playing away. Great job on the part of the Falcons of getting the penetration, doing what's necessary to prevent Washington. As you see right here, initial contact, push him back. Don't allow him to move forward. And you need to do that with a convoy of defenders, and that's exactly what the Falcons did. As you see again right here, you get penetration. You have guys running through gaps and preventing him from getting positive yards so that he doesn't score a touchdown. Great defensive effort on the part of the Falcons. Kudos to D.J. Taylor, who kept Washington out of the end zone. Bad field position, but at this point, you'll take it. Here's McDonald. He'll just tuck and run out of the end zone and get tagged. Sent everybody downfield. It turns out to be a pretty good pickup for B.G. to get them a little more space to work in. I think it might have been their longest rush of, this, of the day. You know, they had a couple good passes from McDonald downfield, but they have not been able to establish a run. And Ryan, I like the fact that he didn't force the issue. He saw a clear pathway, and he took that opportunity. You know, call, when you're calm upstairs, your feet are calm, and your, your decisions are clear. They stay on the ground. A late flag after the Jamal Johnson run. Bowling Green now only has three first downs on this afternoon. But let's see the flag. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Off it, 77. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. So they lose five yards the other way. And the ball moves back to just outside the five-yard line. And once again, positive play followed up by a negative play. They have to eliminate these negative plays and stop hurting themselves, these Bowling Green, Green, Green Falcons. They're doing it on the offensive and defensive end. Fourth penalty by Bowling Green. McDonald under duress, same as last time. He'll just run and slide. So a smarter decision by the quarterback. Uh, but again, nothing downfield. We've seen, uh, obviously, this, uh, this this Bowling Green offense is just not in a good way right now. Yeah, and they need to establish the running game. You know, this is truly a running back by committee team. There's six guys who have carried the ball over ten times for Bowling Green. But, again, McDonald's the only one who's had any positive yardage. And similarly, you don't want your DBs making all the tackles. You don't want your quarterback rushing for all the yards. Exactly. And these aren't designed runs for the quarterback either. McDonald on the move again. And, oh, he gets taken down. That one might have hurt a little bit more. And that was interesting because it was the placement of the arm of the defensive back. It's Khalil Murdoch, the true freshman from Fork Union, Virginia, who comes in and shuts this down. There's Murdoch, and yeah, it gets him up around the head and the neck, and usually that's a no-no, Gerard. It certainly is, and the receivers for the Falcons have to do a better job once their quarterback is out of pocket, becoming uncovered. This is your opportunity to make a play. Scramble rules, man. You got to move. You can't stay where you're at. When your quarterback breaks pocket, short guys go deep, deep guys come short, but you got to move. Third and seven. And this handle, oh, a flag, though. Let's see what happens here. The target. 
Well, well, the ball was on target, but maybe the contact came early. Surly. <laughs> Pass interference. Defense, number three. Now, the ball boot. being placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. My reaction is great play on the part of the defender. But mine's a little different, Gerard. He's <laughs> draped on him. He's no, all over his back. He's, he's wearing him like a sport coat. That's perfect timing. Come on. Oh, I, do, I knew we'd get here eventually between <laughs> the offense and defensive guys, believe me. On first down, the Falcons try to make some noise after the penalty swings their way. Ball run out to the 30. And Dan, just you know, for viewers who don't who can't see the booth cam, it, in fairness, Gerard started complaining about the flag before it was thrown. <laughs> <laughs> Falcons looking for anything they can to get revved up and now I think we've got a BG penalty Buffalo full start off at 64 five yard Colby remains second down gosh you hate to sound like a broken record but we'll have to keep reiterating it you don't want positive, negative. You want positive, positive, positive. And maybe it's going to take going into the half for Coach Left to explain this to his football team, but they're doing a lot to hurt themselves more so than what the Bulls are doing as well. Yeah, Ryan, it's one thing to be down 17 nothing. It's another thing to be down when, you know, you can't, again, you're not stringing any positive plays together. They're spiking all over the place. There's a good catch on the far sideline. And again, they work effectively with Christian Sims, who's been a very tangible factor in what they're trying to do offensively. I'm a big fan of, of hitting it deep and intermediate, but I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. They need to hit these quick games. You, they need to start getting some completions. Their offensive line is not giving McDonald time for the longer routes to develop. And I want to, Christian Sims is a big target. Go back to the big fella. Now you say big. How about 6'4, 240? Hard to miss him. Third and five. Falcons have taken a lot of hits early from Buffalo, and that's why the score is where it's at. And we've got a timeout taken on the field. Timeout. And we'll break here at Doit Perry Buffalo. Stadium. 17 nothing Buffalo Your up on Bowling timeout. Green. We're continuing to encourage you to help people affected by Hurricane Ian. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this disaster. 
back here at Bowling Green. The Falcons have flus been flustered in just about every phase of this football game. And Buffalo sitting on a 17-0 lead. And Matt McDonald has been under duress for a lot of this game. Third and five. And here he comes. Now, open space. Catch there for Tehran Keith, who gets a Bowling Green first down. A flag in the backfield, though. So hold the phones. Yeah, they're going to get holding on Bowling Green. Flag on the play. That would be Bowling Green's seventh penalty if it rings true. There are two fouls on the play. Holding 52 of the offense. 53, thank you. Holding two of the defense. Let's pull those offset. We'll replay third down. Okay, well... Kind of a bad break for Bowling Green. That was one of their better offensive plays of this first half, and now it's washed off. You know, one thing that was interesting, guys, in our Zoom calls this week with coaches, especially with Scott Leffler, he talked about, you know, how his team started to, you know, kind of have a little bit more swagger, more confidence, They're kind of believing in themselves more, but... That has not really played out that way at all in this first half. It really hasn't. But to their credit, they have somewhat stopped the bleeding, though it has not shown up on the scoreboard for Bowling Green Frack Falcons. They are playing a little bit better and showing more effort and conviction in how they're going about approaching this football game. McDonald dives ahead. Boy, that was a big lunge to try to get the first down. I don't think he got it. Maybe half a yard short. Here's your guy, Gerard. Sean Dolak. Look at number 52 right in the middle of your screen. And when McDonald takes off, look at this closing speed to push him out of bounds. And that's the key part right there. If you're going to be an effective defensive player, you have to have the ability to go sideline to sideline. And Dolak certainly possesses that skill set and ability. So Sammy Sear is on a punt. He has not had a good afternoon for Bowling Green. Now he hits one clear and deep. Fair catch called for and a mistake by Bowling Green special teams and that contact will get flagged. You don't want to pile on. You don't want to keep reiterating negative plays, but there have been a lot of negative plays in the first half of this Bowling Green Falcons football team and Payshawn Wimberly is one of their special team go-to guys and he has to do a better job of his decision making on plays like that because now you put them in positive field position in that that was a nice punt on the part of their punter but now with that penalty they're going to advance the football even further so that's an easy call for the officials to make kick catch interference number 30 of the kicking team that 15 yard penalty be assessed from the end of the kick first down media Cassius Howell on the flag as we see the fair catch look and then the contact Buffalo will get good field position when we come back to Bowling Green. The explanation, I think.
So right now it's Bulls football. That 17 nothing score looked like it was going to be a lot worse, but we're getting closer to halftime. But uh, Buffalo has been in charge since the opening kickoff. The upside for BG is they will get the ball to start the second half. Here's Snyder under center. Oh, a bad snap. And he's still loose. Still on the turf. Oh, my gosh. Buffalo. <laughs> well, it hasn't been perfect for them. I mean, that, that ball was loose three different times. Well, they must be living right, Dan, because three different times in which there was an opportunity for the Falcons to land on the football, and they could not get the job done. So credit Snyder from and as well as his Buffalo Bulls teammates to get back on the football. But they're going backwards right now, and they need to kick up the momentum. 17 to nothing is not that big of a lead, especially when you're playing in the MAC. That's a loss of 11 yards. The football must have got toxic. Now here's Snyder rolling out. Plenty of time. Now we'll just throw it into Section 4. So, Gerard, you've played on, you know, some very good NFL teams, obviously, you know, New England being, you know, Exhibit A. But players sometimes get caught in their own head if you're Bowling Green right now. The game's not going well. Players are not making good individual plays. Even good football players and good teams, that can happen to, right? Certainly. It happens on all those. I can think about a time when we're in the midst with the Patriots on a 21-game winning streak, and that got broken by the Pittsburgh Steelers, in which they beat us pretty soundly because we just simply didn't have it that day. But you can't allow that to be an excuse. You have to go out there and make plays, Ryan. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And there's, there's another play, but, you know, it, it's been very rare when Buffalo has been behind the sticks um, due to that fumble. And now it's really the responsibility of Bowling Green's offense to come out and capitalize on that because they should get good field position. And maybe they're starting to wake up. I go back to that 12 o'clock start. We were ready to go. The Pills and the, obviously the Bulls were ready to go, but the Falcons are starting to actually wake up and come alive. So this is a good thing for them heading close to the half. So the punt's coming, and kind of a low kick, and it takes a bounce, a friendly Bowling Green bounce. And now the Falcons have a huge opportunity for a return here. This is Jalen Embry. 41 yards on the return. And that's exactly what you need for the Bowling Green Falcons football team. A positive big play to wake up the sideline to get guys rejuvenated and fired up and ready to go. And right here, what I like about the play is that, okay, let's set him up. Let's break to the outside. Let's see who's faster. And right there, you have great block and no one's holding, so no negative plays taking place. But then having the ability to go north and south after that, great job on the part of the returner of picking up positive yards. And again, Ryan, the key now is, are the Falcons going to start putting positive plays together consecutively as opposed to spiking and then kind of coming back to earth? Well, they've got plenty of time to work. The whole playbook is available to them. But it starts on first oh, down. Wow. Look at this run opportunity here. Jason Patterson, ball is loose. Looks like Buffalo may have come up with it. And it's Buffalo football. Incredible. And that on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. And that play is a microcosm of the game. The Falcons will have a positive play, and then they'll have a negative play. But right there, you have a situation where you have the both in within the play. You have to have protection of the football in situations like that. Great run on the part of the running back. And what I love about the play is one does a great job hitting the hole and then making a nice move in the open field. But ultimately, you have to protect the football if you're Jason Patterson and make sure that you don't give it away. I got to say, ball protection is one of the areas where both teams have kind of been not so great. Fuqua. Has been great defensively. Look at that. One interception, one fumble recovery. He's made an impact here. He certainly day. has. All right, so Bowling Green, can they rev it up defensively here? Just a, maybe a two-yard dive ahead. Bulls trying to get a little bit of space here. You know, I always say, Gerard, when you're in the red zone, the playbook shrinks, and that is the same if you're going in or you're trying to come out of it. Exactly. But sometimes you will see a situation where a team figures that, okay, the defense thinks we're going to be conservative, and you hit them with a shot play. So if I'm bowling green right now, do not relax and think that the Bulls will not be aggressive and take a shot with three minutes and some change left in this quarter or half. Look at big Anthony Hawkins. 
Him and those defense alignment need to get some pressure on Snyder. And they run on the ground, and that's Williams, or sorry, Mike Washington. Again, we've called his name a lot. He's been very productive on the ground for Buffalo. Come out. Bowling Green. They're second. So let's take a, a, a little bit of a mental break here from the football park. 30 seconds and left. Gerard, this will be you, you were talking out. earlier about the teams getting, you know, showing up the early start, 12 o'clock. We'll take a break here and come back and revisit that story. Buffalo up 17-0 on BG. Third down and three. Buffalo trying to get out of some bad field position. And the Falcons, man, they need big things to happen. Big things that will become points. Obviously, as you see on your monitor, that hasn't happened yet. Snyder out of the shotgun on the ground. There's Washington. An explosion run beyond the 40. Nobody's going to catch him. He's still going inside the 20. He will get all of it. No flags. Oh, there is a flag. <laughs> Cameraman blocking the flag at the nine-yard line. It was thrown right at the snap, Dan, so it could have been offsides. If you're the Bulls, you're hoping it is oh. offsides on the part of the Falcons. Listen. Legal formation on the offense. Oh. In my mind, that's actually worse After than having this a hold of Buffalo second flag down. of the day negates a 92-yard touchdown run. Here is Mike Washington. Let's see if we can find it on the replay. Well, they don't have anybody on the right side of the line of scrimmage next to the right tackle, Desmond Bissett. Right, a pre-snap penalty like that, that's something that's supposed to take place week one. That's understandable then. But when you're in the five games into the season, you cannot have these type of mistakes. Oh, wait, After discussion, no. it's been determined there was a legal formation. Therefore, there is no foul for legal formation. The result of the play is a touchdown. 
Well, you had enough linemen, obviously, on the line of scrimmage because ultimately that is what matters. And great run on the part of Washington and getting home and hitting that home run hitter and scoring a huge touchdown that has completely taken the life out of this Bowling Green Falcons crowd as well as the guys on the sideline wearing helmets and shoulder pads. Washington explodes. And BG has nothing to catch him. I think he's established himself as the go-to back for this Bulls offense. Man, that was, uh, you said it, Dan. They were not catching him up the sideline. Buffalo now has 200 rushing yards. They almost got half of it on that one run alone. PAT is up. PAT is good. And we talk about the significance of Bowling Green maybe slowing the game down, but... One explosive play, flips the script. And we had Robbie Mangus, the tight end, coming across the formation, and he just barely chipped the defensive end, but it was enough for Washington to get inside of him. And there's nobody at the second and third levels for Bowling Green to put a hand on Mike Washington. Which is interesting because you take advantage of the fact that, yes, you're at the goal, you're at the goal line, so you have them backed up. But you have to at least put an effort in to touch him. He went untouched on that touchdown. And as you see right here, wearing number 41, which is an honor. It's an honor of Solomon Jackson, former Bulls player. And last week, you had James Patterson, and prior to that, Marilyn Johnson. And this week, Mike Washington Jr. is representing that number extremely well. And there's some magic in that number. He would normally be wearing number 27. So, Gerard, we're going to go back to a point you made earlier about the noon start time. Maybe a little bit of a, of a you know hard thing sometimes for a player to process. And our partner here in the middle, Ryan Cavanaugh, seemed to think it was very important that he was the first person in the booth today. So, yeah. Ryan, do you want to explain why that was so meaningful that you needed to point that out to Well, I Ryan. thought the game was at 10. <laughs> 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 no, I, you know, listen... Show up early to work. You know, you get ready. Right. You get focused. Um, well, you've definitely brought your A game for sure. Thank you. But, but here's the interesting thing about this Bowl Green prior to the start of the game and the pregame warm-ups. The Falcons were warming up, and I have made in just a comment that I think they may be doing too much in pregame warm-ups as far as just getting yourself ready because sometimes you can put too much in the pregame warm-up and not have enough for the football field. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, Gerard, and... Uh, you know, we talked about it before the game. Of, man, they're really putting a lot out there. And, you know, I, I understand the importance of breaking a sweat and getting into the flow of the game. It didn't translate. No, it has not so far. It has definitely has not. And they had moments play. in the Unsports second quarter. Like Hanta. 11, a bully green. And that's your leader. The 15-yard call will be assessed here. The re-kick. And again, you can't have your leader of your defensive squad, Carl Brooks, Having penalties where he's There's on the sideline. towards disqualification. Having issues. You got to take that out of on, not the officials, but actually on the Buffalo Bulls. Remember, Maurice Linguist said earlier this week, we have to keep the enemy over there. Right. Not the enemy within. So a good teaching point at any level of football, but certainly another reason that Buffalo, you know their compass is pointed north. That's nine penalties on Bowling Green in this half. And the kick is short enough, but at this point, two minutes, 43 seconds. Ryan, what objectively is Bowling Green going to try and do here? At this point, I'm not going to say they need to go for broke, but they, they need to throw the football and Although, as, I, as those words are coming out of my mouth, I'm picturing a scenario where they go three and out and Buffalo gets the football back again. So they took the fair catch, which will bring the ball out to the 25-yard line. But they just, I, you know, not a lot is going well right now offensively. And that's a really good point, Ryan, in that if you go for broke, you still have the potential of giving the ball back to the Bulls, who has shown that they can make a big play. Unbelievable. Wow. Ball is loose on the turf. Now... Was his arm in motion? He hit the, he hit the, the blocking fumble back. Recovered by the offense. Second down. Even if okay. it was in motion, the execution right there was poor. You have to do a better job and get to a place where you understand, guys, you're at home getting embarrassed right now. It's 24 to nothing. 
you have to put a better brand of football on display. Playing this way is not going to help the cause, and you're going to be in extra meetings and all type of issues going to take place for your football team if you don't play better. Spoken like a true player, like you're going to be in longer meetings. You know, that's right. the punishment. Another drop football. That was right on the numbers to Christian Sims, who's been rock solid all day. And you rarely hear a college crowd boo their home team. But we're hearing that take place as I speak because of the lack of execution and the lack of energy on the part of this Falcons football team. Falcons will get the football to start the second half, but they are going to have to do some major overhauling. And again, what I said, unfortunately, for Bowling Green might be the truth here. Buffalo is going to get the football back with plenty of time to operate. Catch in space for Odu Hilaire. But it brings up four and down and right. That is a good chunk of time for Buffalo, Buffalo to work with offensively. The final. Right. If you have an explosive offense like Buffalo has on display today, two minutes. Hey, they can probably pull off in a minute more for time. One, five, four, one minute, three, four, seven. That possession, guys, three plays, negative seven yards. Right. It took no time really off the clock. It, no time off the clock, but you had a miscue where your quarterback hits your cl the blocking back as he's attempting to make a pass. You've got a wide receiver dropping a pass, and then you have a quick screen with nobody really blocking in front right. of your wide receiver. Just and that quick replay is a summary of what we just watched in the first half. Right, and it's an issue of effort more so than anything. And if you're Coach Lemple, that's what's going to go in the locker room and you're going to read them the riot at. Ask them. I agree with you, Drive. Drive. Yeah, as you're looking out here, you can actually see the difference in effort and energy between Buffalo and DG. So they share on to punt. His last one was very good, but his first couple were not good. That's pretty solid. Takes a nice bounce, but uh, picked up at about the 47. And now again. Early on the field was an invalid signal given by the receiver. There'll be no return. The ball's dead. Whether it was caught. First down, Buffalo. Still, though, good Bulls field position. Lots of time to work with, and it doesn't get a, doesn't really feel like uh, Maurice Linguist wants to take his foot off the gas at this point of the game. They've been aggressive the whole time, and they are they're going to get their points any way they can. Yeah, certainly, if your Bulls do not let off the gas, send a message that you have an opportunity to be 3-0 in the East, the Mac. So your mentality has to be, no, we're just starting. We're going to play four quarters, not just in half. Finish this half off strong. From the 46 on the ground, that's a run wide. That's uh, A.J. Henderson. And two flags go up, so a positive yardage run for Henderson might be coming back. They haven't called LJ's number yet, but again, the Bulls have some versatility in their running game. And at this point in the game, you can start Holding changing personnel offense. More. Number 18. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. You know, this offensive line for Buffalo has played so well. I said there's no way one of those guys held, but it was a wide receiver. Jamari Gassett, see there on the edge. And, and there's the, there is the international sign for I was just holding. When the, when the Hands palms up. up. Both hit, yeah. palms up, like it wasn't me. It's funny how those things translate from when you were like four and five years old, and you, it stays with you as an adult. It wasn't me. Just put the spotlight on you and say, yeah, it was me. On second down, or sorry, still first down, and 16. A kind of a creative run in the middle for LJ. And now the Bulls are going to bring out their up-tempo offense. See if they can keep rolling here. Snyder on the move and caught in open space, but down right away is Justin Marshall. And we've got an injured Bowling Green player. It, yeah, that's Carl Brooks again. He was out for limping prior to that snap. Um, one of his legs, it looked like he had difficulty bending the knee, and I was thinking, like, you know, just take a knee. Right. Because you just played that defensive rep with 10 players. 
So, Gerard and, and Ryan, this question is for both of you, but I want to start with Gerard. In the Bowling Green locker room at halftime, obviously the first instinct is that there's going to be a lot of yelling, anger, emotion. Now, Gerard, as a, as, as a former NFL player, how, how does that play out in the locker room? Because sometimes a softer approach, you want to boost your team's confidence. Sometimes it's not always obvious as saying, hey, I'm going to go in and start yelling at my team based on what I just saw for two quarters. True, but in this case, I'm old school in my thought process. I'm not going to go in there and give you a pat on the back and tell you guys it's going to be okay either because it's not going to be okay playing in this manner and fashion. And you may, and you need to, I don't even say may, you need to tell these guys that we have to do better than this and employ them to give a better effort to at least play a cleaner brand of football in the second half. Snyder swings it out to L.J. Henderson. It's almost like for a coach, man, when your team performs this way for two quarters, you're kind of in no man's land in terms of, you know, coming up with the right words. I, hopefully you know your team well enough that you know which buttons to push to motivate them. Deep throw, and ball's knocked away. Good play in the secondary. Jalen Burton gets a hand up, but another flag. And ultimately, when you are a Division I athlete, you didn't get here by accident. You have the ability to compete within your DNA. Offside, defense, number 99, five-yard penalty, play second down. And play to that. Play to the idea that, guys, let's do what we're capable of doing because ultimately a lot of this has been self-inflicted on the part of the Falcons. And just go out here and play a cleaner half of football and see what takes place if you concentrate and give the proper effort. Got to be some ownership. From the 37, second and short. Oh, wide open in space. First down pickup and then some for Justin Marshall. That's just too easy. Too easy. Simple curl pattern. Nothing special about it, Ryan. Just hit the open receiver and take what the defense gives you. Yeah. Snyder. Now some pressure, but he works out of it and stays up and makes the smart run to get out of bounds. Snyder with the scramble. Really like what Snyder's doing today. He's being elusive and he's making great decisions. You know, tucking the football and then getting out of bounds. Take four yards instead of a sack and you don't have to worry about using a timeout. Still zero sacks today for Bowling Green. And the part about Snyder that I also appreciate Ryan is the fact that he's not forcing the ball once he's under pressure as well. Yeah, he's making good decisions with the football. Even when he's moving out of the pocket, it seems like he has a sense of calmness and not panic. Now he's throwing, and ball is bobbled and dropped. Oh, and be careful there. Well, okay, so some extracurriculars after the play is dead. In fairness, the defensive back, number two, who I don't see on my chart, but we'll identify him in a minute. Sorry, Brock Horn, got it. He doesn't know that ball's dropped. Right. Right? So, and I appreciate the effort on his part. That's a guy who's playing like I want to be on the football field. I care about what's taking place right here, and I'm going to play a physical brand of football. You know, I wouldn't suggest, you know, any dirty play, late whistles, anything. And there's a flag in the backfield. After the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number two, the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic. First down. But you respect know, player safety and what that represents. Yeah, let's see. Effort. See right there, but he doesn't know the ball wasn't caught. How does he know that? Yeah. No, that's a good point you guys are making. His back, his helmet is literally in the receiver's back, so we can't possibly see if the ball was caught or not. But I understand player safety and how important that is, but that right there is definitely, in my mind, a questionable call. So at the 11-yard line, Buffalo trying to put a little more points on the board before this half goes final. And it is a half that they have absolutely dominated. Line. Pressure, and down he goes. Cole Snyder held it for just a little too long. Bowling Green with not one, but two defenders in there. Gerard, it makes some noise. Yeah, they're celebrating, and Buffalo's getting back on the ball. Low snap, throwing, caught in stride. Stop, though, from the end zone. Wow, was that a sharp throw. 
And a hard catch made by Booby Curry. Run is out of bounds at the one yard line. Yeah, could First not down. get in the end zone though. Excellent catch on the part of Booby Curry. Curry, he knows he's gonna get hit, concentrates and still makes the play. Schneider hands off, end zone. And we got another Buffalo touchdown. That's Marshall. Mike Washington, the ball here Buffalo. I'm sorry, Mike Washington. Tremendous, tremendous poise and precision on this throw to set up the touchdown. Snyder knew exactly where he was going with that football before the ball was even snapped. And then you just give it to Mike Washington. And again, guys, this is all about individual the battles. Play, Horn meets the him in the hole. Is under review. They're going to take another look at it, but I love the leg drive from Mike Washington. Remember, he had the 92 yard touchdown run that kind of re energized Buffalo's offense in this second quarter when they kind of were calm at 17 0. Then the game flipped from there again. Certainly, and, and Ryan mentioned the leg drive, and also with good running backs, you notice that they have their shoulder pads always tilted and moving forward. And when you're in the goal line area, you want to run with a low center of gravity. For a guy that's 6'2", Washington does a really good job of staying low. Yeah, he's got a great uh, low pad level, and you combine that with the power, you keep those legs moving. You know, that's where all the strength of football players are. You know, exactly. Pad levels, everything. Yeah, pad level, leverage. See, See right there. Initiates contact, but he gets low. Now the question becomes, was his knee down? Looks like to me it's a touchdown. See, right about... See, from this angle. After review, it's been determined the really on the field stands. Touchdown. So the points stay on the board for Buffalo. And the first half misery continues for Bowling Green. They had a break for several minutes. Looked like they were maybe a play or two away from at least getting points, getting back in the game in some way, but now it's kind of switched the other way back in favor of the Bulls. And I think uh, what's interesting is that last possession, it was just over two minutes when the uh, Bowling Green took the football. They went backwards seven yards and had to punt, and Buffalo turns it into seven points. All right. Give credit to Buffalo for capitalizing on the mistakes made by the Bowling Green Falcons. You've had penalties on the sideline in which guys are getting in altercations with the officials. You have situations where you're not doing a proper technique and simply not giving the effort necessary in Outside, order to get the job done. 18 defense. Bullies decline. Result of the try is good. You know, one thing, if you're Scott Leffler right now, I guess maybe this is the big challenge. You can both address this. You got you, you, your team's not playing well. Obviously, this the, the outcome of this game, you know, certainly doesn't look like it's in danger for Buffalo. Scott Leffler's got to make sure that you want to hold your team together. Whatever that means, result-wise, we don't know. But you want your team to say, hey, how do we stay on the same page together for each other? Exactly. And when Coach Leffler took over this program, he knew it was a reclamation project. He knew that he had to establish a culture. And right now, what he has to speak to is like, guys, we have made so much progress in regards to our culture and how we play our brand of football. We do not want to go on that slippery slope and go back to where we once were when he took this program over which and which the team was struggling mightily. And right now, they're in that state where they have to get out of it. And they're coming off a performance at Akron that uh, Coach Leffler said last year, the year before, we lose that game. But they're learning how to win. And maybe you're right, Gerard. Maybe they're, he just needs to remind them that that's not who we are anymore. And we need to play like who we are and who we want to be. Fair catch. So no return. And with 14 seconds, it would be amazing if Bowling Green did anything overly aggressive. But... We've seen a lot of amazing things in this first half. Yes, not, yeah. not, not necessarily good amazing either. There's good amazing and there's bad amazing. And then there's We've, bewilderment. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. And obviously the good amazing is mostly comes from the visiting Buffalo Bulls. And let's see a little underneath. Oh, boy. 
another ball throwing out. Tell you what, if, if Matt McDonald is going to maybe think about things at halftime, maybe throwing on the run is not what he should be doing. And at this point, I'm all about playing to the last down, but you may want to just take a knee and go into the, into the half and reassess what's taking place and start anew. And Matt McDonald is celebrating his birthday today, but Oof. for two quarters, there has not been much to celebrate. Now a safe throw and a drop. We are not keeping track of passes dropped. That's Jamal Johnson, but... Maybe we have a new stat to start to figure out as this game continues. Well, his receivers certainly have not helped out the cause today for Matt McDonald. Because when you look at pass attempts and completions, the majority have been drop passes. Hey, I'm sorry. It's not that cold out either, Ryan. No, you know, this is the effort that we're talking about where they're getting set and guys are just downfield thinking the quarter's over. Nice so, job. Yeah, that's a nice little pickup for Jamal Johnson. Buffalo with some Ole defense, but that is the end of our first half. And the end of the first half. Score don't lie. 31 0. Big plays all over the place for the Buffalo Braves as they try to stay perfect in the Mac East. We'll have halftime activities coming up in just a moment from Joint Perry Stadium. <laughs> 